Oh, Luke chapter 5 in verse 37. So we're still talking about the same topic, dating effectively. Luke chapter 5 verse 37, Bible principles. That chapter 5 verse 37, let's go to verse 36. He says, and he spake a parable to them. And he says, no man that put a new piece of material, no man put a new piece of new material on an old one. Otherwise, both the new and make a rent. And the piece that was taken out and the new agree not with the old. He says, no man, let, let me read the New Living Translation. Give me the New Living Translation, please. Because the way King James is constructing it is challenging. Then Jesus gave this illustration. No one puts a new piece of material from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. And the reason I'm saying so is that most of the time, now this service is for singles, but of course a, a lot of us also are married. So I'm going to move here and move there. Most of the time, what happens is that you want to use a singles mindset to enter dating and to enter marriage. No, it doesn't work that way. There must be a change of mindset. The Bible says, whosoever findeth what? A wife, not a girlfriend. That means before you are found, you are a wife material. So there's some things that must change. So he says, then Jesus gave this illustration and said, no one puts a piece of cloth from a new garment and used to patch the old garment. He says, there's going to be different way of thinking. For then the new garment will be ruined and the new patch will not even match the old patch. So there are some basic ways you need to think, just some basic ways you need to think. So the first thing when it comes to relationship and love is this. This is the first thing. And I want to say this for all of you that are married and all of you that are single. Listen, the first thing is this. People love you for something. Never forget that. So when you talk about relationship, and this is what relationship is, and this is why people suffer a lot. This is you. This is you. And you keep pouring. And you pour into your mom. And you pour into your sister. And you pour, you know, you, you keep pouring. And you pour into this person. You know, you pour into, you know, I, I don't know what you're pouring into now. You pour into your colleagues at work. And all of those things. Then you are here. And there's nothing to pour again. And people are coming to relationships and they're saying, well, I'm empty and you are empty. Let's get together. So I wanted to pour into me. How do I pour into you when there's not, nothing to give? I, I want to empty this so that I can do this. Very, I hope I can do, I can empty this very well. Yeah, so this is what it is. This is what dating looks like. This is a man, this is a woman. So you say, okay, so we're coming together. See, when we come together like this, there's nothing to pour. So the first thing as a single person is this. You need to give yourself value so that you can add value. So someone says, what do I do when I'm single? I keep adding value to myself so that I can add value to somebody else. That's the first thing I do. Guys, what do you have to offer apart from money? Ladies, what do you have to offer apart from sex? I mean, it's challenging that sometimes you watch TV shows, you go on social media, and the lady says, all I have to offer is my beautiful... I don't want to say it. And see, you don't, you don't understand. And I understand what you're saying, but it's going to be more than that. And as a guy, you say, once I have money, I can get to the woman. It's going to be more than that. You are going to have to build into yourself some very strong value. The reason why is that if what you offer begins to diminish, the love will diminish also. Glory to God. And you need to say, you need to say, you know, and, and that's why sometimes some of you wonder that. How come the most beautiful girls are not married? Because at the end of the day, or the most beautiful girl end up being divorced, at the end of the day, nobody wants to live with, with just beauty. It has to be something more than beauty. You hear Pastor John talk. He said, I can't tell my husband is the tallest. I can't say it's the darkest. He said, but I have a solid man. Because tall and darkness does not add to the beauty and the quality of your marriage. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Are you here? 
And I'm saying so, you know, and I'm saying so because that's the first thing. So if I want to talk to single people, so I'm single, what should I start from? That's where you should start from. Where do you start from? You start by adding value to yourself. Add, start by adding value to yourself. Listen to me. You can do BBL. BBL can attract, it cannot sustain. BBL can attract, it can sustain. When you buy a perfume, you buy a perfume, what happens? Eventually, you throw away the wrapper. Because the packaging is good, but we stay with content. Packaging is good, but we stay with content. What do you have when there's no packaging? Once you become married, then we stay with what? Content. What are things you have to build into yourself? Build integrity, build discipline, build hard work, build care, build, you know, those are, those are values you have to build into yourself. When someone dates you, let them know they've dated a human being. Let them know they've dated a human. Let them know they've dated a human. That your kindness, your commitment, your loyalty is next to none. Some of you are here, you've dated people before and when you think of then you want to delete the past because you are asking yourself how stupid could I have been to ever think I would stay with this person. Glory to God. And for singles like for someone like experiencing delays, I have several things I want to tell you. So I've spoken about the first thing. So if you're single, you know, and it's about, you know, all of you that knew, it's about marriage and relationship months. So we're talking about the issues about for marriage and singles. And it's the fourth service, which I really dedicate towards the single people. So that's why you're here. So for those that are singles and want to get married, the first thing is this. So the first thing is this. Seven, seven things. I hope I can talk, take them within the course of my time. Number one, am I available? The reason why is that you can be single and know what? So what do you mean? You can be single and not available. How are you not available? You can be single and not be emotionally available. How are you single and emotionally available? I will tell you. And let me tell you something. This is very powerful. You can be single and what? Be unavailable emotionally. Why am I saying that to you? Why I'm saying that to you is simple. Number one. How do you know I'm single and unemotionally available? Number one. When you want someone that does not want you. You come to the church, you see the guy that plays the keyboard. Where's the other guy that plays the keyboard and the drums? Where, where are they? You say, is that guy in the choir I want? What kind of kind of choir? You may want him all your life, and ten of you can want him. It's only going to get one person. And what happens to you is that once your attention is on someone, I mean, I know people that uh, there's, there's, there's a lady I knew, she used to like an American artist. Is it Drake or something like that? Is it Drake? Like he's very, like you say, his body's very hot. Is the one, right? Yeah. They say, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a pastor, it's Drake I want. I said, you can want Drake all your life. I know he won't want you back. The reason why, it's not that I know, but like, what will you connect? How will you connect? Your walls are very different. The second thing when people are single, unavail and emotional available, are people that are single, but they are holding on to the hurts of the past. They are single physically, but emotionally, they are unavailable because they are holding on what? To the emotions of the past. They are holding on to the hurt. So, you, so, so you, when you hear them talk, you hear them, that happen. They are full of stories. They are full of stories. I know you are single, but the truth is that you are not available because emotionally you have been preoccupied with a lot of hurts and damages. The third category of people that are single and unavailable are people that date people they cannot marry. You know this is leading nowhere and you are there. You are single and you are what? Not available. The fourth category of people that are single and unavailable are people that are single and they've used their career and their success to fill up the void. So you see them walk overnight. When you see them talk, they talk about their job. They, you know, they, 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 they want to make sure that there's nothing that shows. Let me tell you something. If you're going to be single, you must miss it. 
you must feel, and that's how you get married. You must be like, ah, I'm tired of all of this. I'm not trying to use something to fill up the void. I need to, I understand some people are all over their singleness. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that have so distracted themselves from their singleness, they are not in touch with it again. They've, they've used other things to fill it so much. So the first question is that if you're delayed, are you what? Come on. Are you what? The second question is this, are you accessible? Where can we find you? You are single. Where can we find you? After church, before we check this, bam, you've entered car, gone. Where are you going to? Husband, you don't have. Wife, you don't have. Children, you don't have. And you keep praying that God, give me someone to marry. Will an angel appear in your room? Online, you put, your, you, you put the status on private. For what? Stop blinking in the dark. Nobody can see you. Praise God. If you're single and your, your heart is to marry, then you need to be what? Accessible. You're in a church like this. You're not in any unit. You're not in a department. You're not in a cell. How would they find you to marry you? Sometimes people ask me, a guy can come and say, Pastor, this guy, this lady, did you know her? I said, I didn't know her. And meanwhile, it's not been good if I say I know you or I know someone that knows you because an extra comment could be like, oh, I know. She's a very good Christian. I'm very, she's very good. I really are. Ah, okay, that's an encouragement. But nobody knows you. Inside your raw four, you just enter. Are Praise God. And you must notice something. I showed you. How many of you remember the, the, the video I showed you last week? Yeah. Which says that 60% of people that meet for marriage now meet what? Online. So when they say, are you accessible? Not just physically accessible. You must be accessible digitally. And you must, for you to say to you, like, number one, have a good profile. Don't just write on your Instagram, foodie. Think of the people that will like you. What is like foodie? Foodie? You will not write what you do. So when someone wants to marry you, you say, ah, I'll just be, I'll just be feeding you. Just be feeding you. Just be feeding you. I'll be feeding you. I'll be feeding you. Or you have Instagram that shows a lot of your nakedness. Facebook that shows nakedness. Everything is naked. Even guys are not doing it. You wear boxers and show chest. I'm like, what are you selling? You don't, you, you see, you don't market us. You don't want to sell. Glory to God. What should you show on, on your digital status? Have a nice profile. What do they call it? Banker. Banker. God lover. Very ambitious about life. And giving to a lot of travels. Simple. Simple. When I get there, I know the kind of person I'm talking about. So, number two, the pictures you post. Don't post pictures. See, good, do good photo shoot. Because they look like you, you are looking for something. And let your, feet, let your picture show your different interests. Don't just show a picture of you in church crying. <laughs> you know, you're, 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 every time you just, ah, ah, you know, it gives you the wrong impression as if you are not balanced. Show a picture. I was crying in church, but I was also at the beach, but I was also in the office. I was carrying my cousin's children. So pictures that show just different areas of your life. When someone sees it, they can really just go around your life. I'm like, oh, wow. This is Some of you, all your pictures about walk. It's about walk, walk, walk. Sketch suit, sketch suit. We need to see more than sketch suit. Praise God. I said, praise God. Are you what? accessible you can be single and not available you can be single and not what accessible online digital digital space when you see places where people are like christian circles people that have similar values with you not just christians sometimes there are people that just have similar values with you put a nice comment there don't just say you clapped what does clap mean 
Because when I post now, people are reading my comments. I mean, there was a, there was a, there was a story I heard about someone that reposted, my, reposted the post and that was how she found her wife. Just write something there. Oh, wow. Service today was actually very interesting. You know, um, you know it was very interesting. It, uh, it was good to connect with good people. And when you talk that way, that's when you talk. Someone says, ah, who is this? You know, that's when you talk. You're in criticism of who is talking what? Like this. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. The third thing, and maybe this I will stop. Can you be approachable? One is accessible. The next one was what? Approachable. Some people are single, but they are not what? You know, you know culture now tells us that if you're going to be a hot girl, Your eye must be up. No. Are you approachable? Are you easy to talk with? And you know what? That gift of being approachable also works in marriage. Do you have my knives here? Yeah, bring my knives. Because there's something I did in the third service. I can't do the whole message. You need to go back and watch it. About conversations, conversations, conversations when it comes to relationships. Conversations. Can I, can I get a couple? Any couple in this service? Any couple at the back? Just say we're a couple. We're married. Husband and wife, we're here. Who? All oh, the new couples. <laughs> two of you come. Two of you come. Two of you come. Hey. Approachable, approachable. Are you easy to talk with? Are you able to discuss with? Can you, can you expand your perspective? Because sometimes life is not white. Sometimes life is not black. Please, two of you come. Yeah, yeah. None of you is shy because I know the two of you personally. I need a microphone. My other microphone is not here. My microphone is not here, yeah. No, two of you come, don't worry. That's great. Stand here, just face her. I don't know why the two of you are being shy. You're shy. And this is what conversation. Listen, most of you in your relationship, you are talking, but you're not talking. What happens in relationship most times, actually, about all of you that are married or dating, please pay attention. What happens is that when you think you are talking, you actually have a knife in your mouth. Just hold it like this. Yeah, closer. This is what happens. And, and, and you wonder, and when you do this, you keep wondering why your partner is defensive. Nobody can be talking with a knife in the mouth and the partner will not block. You'll not be like, how can you? There's a way you talk that is attack. It's no longer words. And then after some time of you being attacked and you are busy blocking, you know what happens all the time? You also go and get your own knife. And say, no, you are not the only one that can kill me too. I need my own knife. And you get your own knife. And when you start talking, everybody... Yeah. When you start talking, so you hear, you, you hear someone says that, ah, ah. you hear someone says that, how can an intelligent person cook like this? That was not a conversation. That was an attack. You hear a woman call the husband goat. And what happens in relationship that the two of you, because... You know, you begin to attack. See, the words couples use. See, I don't understand. The words, some of you are dating. And the way you are, your, your partner calls you prostitute. And you are dating. And they comes up and say you are sorry. And you say it's okay. Are you normal? <laughs> prostitute is not, it's a, it's not a small word though. And in dating, what happens is it every time we're talking, we're just stabbing ourselves and stabbing ourselves. So you see that relationship, everybody's hurt. And the reason why is their mouth. They use their mouth to cut each other. And guess what? Once this person will see, I'm not doing enough, he goes and says, you, I will deal with you. Go for a bigger knife. Yeah, that's what happens. So, you know, people will start looking for new words, new abuses to, you know, and, you know, and you, listen, this lady could not talk before. How did you know how to talk? This is what happens in relationship. Once your partner cannot talk and you can talk, you will sharpen their mouth. Is that not what happens? After
after two or three years, don't you have friends that were very quiet before, but their voice has now been opened? And the reason why is that they so in that relationship that kept on verbally assaulting them. And let me tell you, there's a word for such people, they are called verbal assassins. What they call verbal assassins. Yeah, the two on him. Yeah, this one. Hold it here. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> and that's how relationship is, where everyone is stabbing everyone, and everyone is fighting everyone. So any small thing, you're an idiot. Any small thing, he goes. But the question is that if you want to have a relationship. And I'm saying so because this problem of, of talk does not start as a single person. It doesn't start in marriage. It starts what? As a single person. Can we talk? Can I? Hope you not be offended. You know, social media always find a thing about me every week, so it's okay. So you, you can post this. Amen? Because they are here in church, so you just pick it up and post it. So. I'm trying to say it in the best possible way. <laughs> Most beautiful girls have very bad marriages. And the reason is this. They invest more in their beauty than in their person. Most rich men have very bad marriages because they invest more in their wealth than in their person. You know why? Because what made them attractive to you in the first place was both the beauty and the wealth. If you are going to change the narrative, invest in your person and have a better family and have a better marriage. And that's the truth. And, and beautiful girls, you know beautiful girls, it, it's, it's, it's even more challenging because it's from when you are young, when they see your yellow skin, they will start following you, following you, following you, following you. So you know that all the men that follow me, follow me because of how I look. So you will not be investing into the look, investing into the look, and forget that beauty will fade, person will remain. Personality will remain. Same thing with men. As soon as they make money, and all the women are just saying, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Hey, this is how money is. Everybody say yes sir. They will be investing the money, investing the money. They will not treat the men right. The women right. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. You're still, yes, you can give her the knives and put the knives on the table. Thank you. Hallelujah. You will soon come back briefly. So the third one is what? Be what? Approachable. Will, will you come one more minute? Come, just, just come, stay back. Yeah. Let, let, let me use one more illustration about approachability. <laughs> Face each other. Give her the microphone. Put on the. What do you see? Approachability also has to be with the ability to understand. I, I spoke about the thought service better. To understand that my perspective is my perspective is not the only perspective that is right. Because one of the things that make conversation tough among couples is this. You just think that you are the only one that is right. And the truth is that both of you can be right and have different views about it. Let's watch this. What do you see? No, use the phone, microphone to your mouth. A phone. No, no, what do you see on the, on, on the, uh, on the, oh, um, the screen? What, what do you see on the screen? Um, uh, uh, the yeah. clock? Just tell me what you see. Don't tell the me the time, clock. The time. Just tell me the time that the you time. see. 1342. You see 1342. What else do you see? Oh, the color blue. Blue. That's good. What do you see? What do you see? I, I know it's a, what do you see? What, what, what is this? You see SIM cards? You see what? Cameras. Who is lying? I, I don't know. You don't know? But why should you not see what you're seeing? Oh, yeah. Are you lying? No. Because she cannot see time. Hmm. Who is lying? So this one goes on in a normal relationship. Someone says, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. But it's not as if I'm lying. We have different perspective. So before you know it, this degenerate, are you blind? 
So I said, you are the one that is blind. So I said, then your brain is upside down. He said, exactly. Your mother did not teach you well. And, and what is happening is that there's nobody lying, but we are seeing from what? Two different sides of what? Of a conversation. And all you have to do is to leave where you are and come to where he is and you will see what he is saying. And all you have to do is to leave where you are and go to where she is and she will see what she's saying. But want to stay on our perspective and say the other person is lying. You know something I noticed? When I deal and cancel with couples, the first thing they always say is that you are lying. They say, ah, you are lying. In front of a man of God, you don't even fear God. You are lying. And the guy says, I'm not lying. I say, ha, ah, pastor. So he is lying and sometimes it's sometimes it's a lie most time it's not a lie it's just a difference in perspective thank you glory to god and i'm saying so because you know and you know what you need to win this you need to know that although you are right i also can be right so your partner says, I don't have money. Hey, I know. You never have money. You never have. You just be lying, lying, lying. Just confess positive, Disha. Why not say, oh, you don't have money, honey? Wow. I'm a bit perturbed. Could you explain and ask for perspective that will help you understand? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. You've let one of my outlines in the office. Please, can you help me get it quickly? Okay, it's here, it's here. I just, hallelujah. So let's begin to round this up so that we can close today's service. Are you blessed this morning already? Exactly. So number one, we've spoken about, for all of you that are dating, what you know what all of it that it's what you should be doing so the question is that for all of it that's single what you should think about when you're single i've spoken about there are seven of them are you available are you accessible are you approachable the other one is that are you agreeable that's what i said are you agreeable or you're a cantaqueros person you know then the other one is that you're attractive and attractive is more than beauty is about person now for and for those that are married we've spoken about just looking at things from a different perspective to help your mind become stronger so the last teaching is this if you're dating what exactly do you do if you're dating what exactly do you do number one what so how do you date say dating is not a time to remove pants and bra praise god dating is not a time to remove pants and bra praise god Because this generation, dating is a license to have sex with you without feeling bad. <laughs> Praise God. And someone says, oh, we're dating. They're like, like, oh, you know, we, can, we can't have sex. Why? We're not dating. Then we're dating. We can have sex. Guys, you're born again, eh? Bible says your body must be holy unto the Lord. Either you are Gen Z or Gen Z. Bible does not change the standard. So the question is, so, so what happens? You know, it's amazing when people are dating, they touch each other's private part, but they can't touch each other's phone. Which one is private? So what do you, when you're dating, what do you do, number one? Dating is a fact-finding and discovery stage. Dating is what? The fact-finding and discovery stage. I said it earlier in the services, dating is questioning time. You need to ask some question. Hi, is this really your name? Or is this another name? Have you changed your name before? Who is your father? Do you know your father? Who is your mother? Do you know your mother? Is this your car or is your father's car? Do you have a job or you don't have a job? Do you have debt or you don't have debt? Are you gay or you are straight? Do you have children or you don't have children? Glory to God. Do you multi-date or you're a single dater? Do you intend to marry me or we'll see as it goes? What are your views?
views about finances in family? Do you take responsibility or the woman takes responsibility? Those are questions you must ask. Why? When you know the truth, it will hurt. But the truth also heals. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. The second thing is this. <laughs> second thing about dating is... So what do you do when I'm dating? Number one, dating is a fact-finding and discovery phase. The fact you don't know can lead to heartbreak. That's the key word. The fact you don't know can lead to heartbreak. Excuse me, what is your general type? I'm OO. When last did you check you were OO? Do you like Jesus or you don't like Jesus? Well, I just believe anything. Thank you. I leave. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. The second thing is about the second about dating is that it's a time for building trust. It's what? It's a time for building trust. The reason why is that trust takes time to build. And this way, you can't just say, let's build trust. No, 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 no. As I leave my life in front of you and I'm authentic, I'm truthful, I'm purposeful your trust begins to grow gradually. Don't let your love grow more than your trust. It will cause heart attack eventually. So it builds trust. And the last thing about thing is this, dating also helps you gain alignment. In the place of dating, you can begin to talk about alignment of purpose. What do you want to do in the future? What does the future look like for us? Praise God. I said praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. So simple thing you want to do, investigate before you invest. What I say, investigate. So before you invest your emotions, before you invest your money, investigate before you invest. All of you that watch from America, ask him, have you been to prison before? Do you have fraud star on your name? Because if something happens in the future now, they will investigate both you and the wife or both you and the husband. So number one, investigate before you invest. Number two, check before you check in. What do you check? The things he said they are, are they like that? Glory to God. What do you do doing, friend, doing, what do you do doing dating? Build Build, sorry, build friendship and good communication. The reason why is that never marry a man you can't be vulnerable with. Sex is easy. Vulnerability is difficult. Because vulnerability is that this is the way I am. Hope you can accept me that way. Someone say hallelujah. During dating, what do you do? Resolve and agree on areas of difference. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. There's a lot of scriptures. I'm just jumping the scriptures so that I can fulfill and close this. Resolve all areas of difference during dating. And let me say something to you. And if you date someone and it doesn't work out, you succeeded. Amen? The reason you test cloth is to know if it's your size or not. So the reason you date is to know if it's right or wrong. So there's no way that it went bad. It didn't go bad. It was not just my type. So you take it and say, my brother, thank you. It's been a pleasure to date you. God bless you and move on. A broken relationship is better than what? A broken marriage. Let's pray. Today was a master class, right? Okay, so we have a lot to say. Sorry, there's no time for questions and conversations afterwards. We have a lot to say. Any question today? One question. Just one. Anywhere. Any question today? Oh? Huh? Where? Okay, yeah, take the microphone, yeah. Go ahead, give him the microphone. And we'll pray. There's another question. Only men are asking questions today. Wow, this is nice. Yes, normally it's always women. Yes, go ahead, sir. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Uh, my question is, um, how do you get away from a toxic relationship? And um, second one is... Um, how do you get away from a toxic relationship? Are you yes. married? No. So no, why no. are you there? Leave now. How, like, you're, you're already out, but how do you get yourself 
Okay, oh, from... how do you recover from a toxic relationship? Yes. Okay. So, uh, one line I will use to help you. Always think of your bad experiences as lessons and not pains. So, the way you get away is this. Number one, what did I learn? And there are a lot of things you can learn. And when you learn, you let the lessons help you become better. Number two, if that doesn't work, then you might need to get a therapist because you might be really be broken somewhere within that cannot help. You know, I don't know if that helps you. But what normally will turn... Let me tell you, pain, pain is attached to meaning. Pain is what? Attached to meaning. If you change the meaning of pain, pain will find purpose. Yeah. So you can transform your pain into what? Into what? Into purpose. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, another question that I have um, from, from, for someone. It's a friend of mine, actually. I was trying to you know, advise him. He's married. Okay. Yeah, and he's, um, he's complaining that his wife is... Um, he's, the, the wife is... Um, what's the word now? Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really telling on him because... You know, I, I can't help you. The reason why is that you're telling a story of two people that I don't have details to. Because if I ask you more questions, you will not be able to answer me. So there'll be no point for you to ask that question. Because I'm going to ask you, why does the wife verbally abuse him? And you're going to say, I do not know. Um, one of the reasons... I think he's not financially okay at the moment. Mm, I mean, that's what he told you. That's his perspective. That you can be poor and proud. It's a bad combination. So, you know, I cannot just say that. I have to hear from the woman's side to give you bright counsel. So maybe you can bring her to church next Sunday and we can do that. Yes. Yeah, lady, 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 lady. Give the lady, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. Okay, so my question is, how, as a person, how do I move on from past experience to... Should I start again? Okay, so my question is, how do I move on from past experience to have a better relationship? What, are the past, what, what is the past experience? Just tell me, please. Okay, so for example, I do not have a great relationship with my father. Okay. I am a single mother. Okay. The father is not in our lives. Okay. So I think those are like what are holding me back. Wonderful. From having a relationship with a man. Okay. Because I kind of fear that at some point it would leave. Okay. So, so the first thing, you're telling me what the problems are. Number one, you have the fear that the man will leave. That's the first thing. Yes. Number two, you're not used to love from a man. And you've seen it that way. Number three, you might not be good in choosing somebody because you said about your baby daddy right now. That's the third one. The first thing, so, so the first thing I will say to you is that number one, it's, you have to think about these things properly. When you chose your baby father, you thought you were going to be with him. What made you choose him? Okay, so the thing was that it was just the first time thing. I had just finished secondary school and we tried it. <laughs> and it happened. And you got pregnant? Yes. So it was kind of like a secondary school love. That no, no, no. But why did you, even in secondary school, why did you choose him? There's someone that, why didn't you choose Ike now? Why didn't you choose Victor? Why did you choose him? It was, it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of like the popular guy then in school. And yeah. so, 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 hold on. Are you seeing your values right now? Your value is that you are valuing popularity over quality. So, in when you want to date in the future, what mistake will you not make? I will not make the va mistake of putting what? Popularity. popularity over quality. That's it. Then secondly, so this is what I will say to you. The first thing is this. The first thing is this, you have to find a way to love yourself and give yourself a lot of love. Because if you don't have love, you can't give love to somebody else. The second thing you have to do is that all the mistakes you've made, can you write it down and say, how can these mistakes become lessons for me in the future? Yeah, and be like, okay, you know, I dated this guy because he was popular. But hey, 
what do I do right now? So you will notice something. So you, you are naturally attracted to popular people, right? I, am I was attracted to No, no, no. You, don't say your words because it could still be current, you know. And the reason why is that there's no denying what it is is to know yourself that, hey, everybody knows what attracts them. Don't you know what attracts you? Some of you like people that are rich. That once it's rich, it can be useless, so but you just like, just like him. <laughs> so some people like people that are powerful. That once the person is powerful, you like, you fall in love. So the reason why I'm saying that if you know that I'm attracted to people that are very popular, so you must, you must put barrier. So that as soon, you know, there are girls I don't get close to because I know who I could be attracted to. I know me, your pastor, I know. I think, you know, I, I mean, some years ago I met a one friend that lost contact with, we met, you know, we met in the mall. He's like, oh my God, I've not seen in a long time. He's like, I said, I've not seen. Let's exchange numbers. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we exchanged numbers. And as I left, I just deleted it. And the reason why was that I knew that that's a wrong number for me to keep. You must know yourself. Know thyself as a man. Praise God. Then another thing I would say is that, you know, that will help you is this. Ask yourself, what mindset do I have? about all of these things. Are they helping me or not helping me? It's a long thing, but the time will not let me go further. You know, but those three things can set you back. You know, the first thing is that I'm impressed with the fact that you want to try to love again. That's good. So number two, you know that popular guys don't work for you. They break your heart. You know, just know that once and for all. You know, the number three is the fact that, you know, what do I need to learn? So number one, when you were young, you loved a popular guy and you were naive. So what do I need to learn so that I can make what? better decisions. Let's stand up and pray. Let's stand up and pray. Were you blessed this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. This afternoon. Wow. It seems as if you are loaded. I said a lot in a short time, right? Today is the last service. That's the reason why on singles and relationships. Today is the last. Next month we are moving to healing. And we are discussing emotional healing in the fourth service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stand up. Everybody stand up on your feet. And this is what I want to pray for. That God will grant you grace to do. You know, relationship is easy to talk. That God will grant you grace to what? To do. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Some of you have problems with talking. Some of you, your emotions are up and down. Some of you, you're single. Some of you are divorced. Some of you are single moms. Some of you, you know, you're married. I want to pray that God will grant you grace to be able to do. And Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word we've heard today. I'm praying for everyone today that you'll grant us grace to do, O oh God. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.